So we will start uh, with uh, obstructive airway disease and uh, we will talk about COPD here. So before we go on to the ventilatory strategies in how do we ventilate a patient of COPD, we must understand the disease pathophysiology, the underlying disease pathophysiology. As you uh, may all know that it is actually uh, a disease of the distal collapsible airways and that is how it is different from the other element of obstructive airway disease that is bronchial asthma, which is actually a disease of the more central and robust airways. So that is how it is different. COPD, we are talking about the terminal airways, which are easily collapsible. So what happens is that with the inflammation, there is damage to these distal airways and there is an easier tendency to collapse further. And with collapse, there will be this problem of air trapping happening. So there will be air trapped inside the alveoli. So uh, along with that, there will be lung parenchymal damage as well. And because of the lung parenchymal damage, there will be uh, uh, loss of the elastic recoil of the lung. And so it will become very difficult for the person to push out air from the lungs. So again, there will be air trapping inside. So there will be an increase in the end expiratory lung volume or the functional residual capacity which eventually will encroach on the total lung capacity. So no further new tidal volume can get inside the lungs. So that is the underlying disease pathophysiology. And because of an increase in the intraalveolar pressure, the inspiratory muscle has to work very hard. The muscles have to work very hard. They have to constantly push in air inside the alveoli against sudden pressure. And when the muscles fatigue out, there will be respiratory failure leading to eventual hypercarbia, uh, hypercapnia and hypercarbia. So that is the entire disease pathophysiology of COPD. It's a disease of the distal terminal airways. There will be air trapping inside. And for that, there will be a constant increase in the intraalveolar pressure. There will be increase in the FRC. And for that, uh, there are remains chances of type two respiratory failure happening. So what are the ventilatory challenges that we get? So many a times we see that uh, uh, this is actually has gone to an irreversible stage and uh, it won't have a reversible component. So that is going to make our life even more difficult while we try to ventilate these kind of patients. And Something that we all know of that is auto peep or dynamic hyperinflation or intrinsic peep, whatever you call it, they are just uh, synonymous. And it is very, very difficult to quantify this amount of air that is trapped inside the lungs that is, that is causing this dynamic hyperinflation. So when you are there standing at the bedside, it becomes very difficult to quantitate uh, the amount of dynamic hyperinflation that is happening inside the lungs of the patient. And weaning is obviously very difficult. The moment the patient lands up into ventilator, you have to formulate your weaning strategies right from day one. How do you want to take out this person from the ventilator? Weaning strategies have to be developed right from day one. You have to treat the underlying cause. And at the same time, you have to look for that particular window so that you can pull out the patient from invasive and may bridge over to non-invasive ventilation, use BiPAP. And uh, that way you can terminate mechanical ventilation as soon as possible. And one of the major causes of weaning difficulty can be because of myopathy. As you all know that steroids are an essential element of management of COPD. And with the usage of steroid comes the problem of myopathy. And uh, let me remind you that because of COPD, there are certain structural changes happening to the chest wall. There will be flattening of the domes of the diaphragm. The rib cages will be horizontal and that compounds your problem. So these are all hill, lot of problems. These are all challenges that you have to face when you are actually uh, trying to ventilate a patient of COPD. And obviously these patients are elderly and they will have hosts of other problems. They will have other comorbidities which are just going to compound your problem. So in a nutshell, these are the ventilatory challenges that you have to face while you are uh, trying to ventilate a patient of COPD. So what are the goals that we need to set whenever we are intubating a patient because of a type two respiratory failure, when the pH has dropped, the CO2s are extremely high and you need to wash out the carbon dioxide. And at the same time, you have to take care of the dynamic hyperinflation that is happening inside the 